How are you doing today, good sir? I have been waiting to talk to you for a while. Oh, yeah? I would say a, a few days. Two days. We could say in a way. And I have now <clears throat> come together with a series of light and friendly quips meant on meant to uh, inform us all a little bit more about what you do. Are you interested in sharing? Yes, of course. Well, good. Because, you know, we don't really have anything except each other. What do you think about it? All right, let's get started. Um, so, you know, hopefully after this is all said and done, we'll know a little bit more about you. We'll know more about what you do, because what you do matters to us all. Not really. It's very important. Nah. And if we were smart, business, we'd all ahead. give you our money. Lost. Meh. And make you our king. Alright, let's go. I would say your name on this channel should hey be there, King Dude right of Electrical and mechanical engineering background. <laughs> All right, you ready to talk? C D E B. C D E M B. Okay. Sidimb. Let's do this. It's a recursive. Let's start this. You ready? Mm. Let's go. So why are we even here? What is energy? What okay. is right. a solid state battery ever going to do for us that my, uh, you know, my mom should have done? Alden, you're going what? Wait, what? Your, your mom should have done? We'll Was your mom a battery? Head on in. Did your mom no. battery you? Just, just, we're just, we're letting it all Are you battered? I mean, I mean, I want you to ooze forth the knowledge you can take. I, I, uh, uh what I'm saying solid is the, CBD like, uh, oil. I think uh, it's CBD oil like you can put on, you be used for these batteries. Oh, <laughs> Epitaxial welcome. CBD oil. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> CBD oil? Dude, I wonder what would happen to CBD oil if you expose it to UV light. Exactly. On a silicon oil. surface. I knew it. I so, mean, it would probably be, it would probably just reduce to some carbon or something like that, but so, it would be interesting. Uh, you know, in the end, what we're all interested in is it's one way windows. to, one way to take the, take the chips higher. Yeah. Yeah. Do we, is there, is there even such a thing as a solid state battery? Yeah, there is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's it something that's an, been worked on for about the last 10 years, I think. I think 10 I'll years ago was when, um, no, I mean, I mean, like used it. in used in um, in household items. No, not yet. No, because it's it's not um, it's not cheap enough, really, to be marketable at this point. I mean, Panasonic's doing a lot of work, um, a lot of investment in it, so it will probably, you know, be in. I would imagine phones in the next like two, three years probably electric vehicles you know around the same amount of time still uses the same you know core resources that we have you know lithium cobalt so those are still the active species in there which we already have mines for so all the infrastructure is really set up for it so we'll have even smaller tinier phones with more tinier exact batteries proportions of very Ooh. fine rare <clears throat> or actually you know what probably i don't know everyone seems to like the form factor that we have, have right now so i would imagine we'll keep the same form factor but increase the capacity of the battery well you mean inc inc decrease the weight of the battery per that as well yeah power. yeah per yeah. per uh yeah, yeah per like unit and solid state power. batteries per Wait. kilogram of actual Who battery material yeah, will be like will be a lot more output. Yeah, more more. Um, Could you fly more a plane efficient on solid state batteries? 
could a plane? Could you have an all electric plane if solid state batteries became? Uh, really? I don't think so. The energy density is probably Ooh, not stuff. high enough. Oh, even with a solid state battery. Well, it's it's one of those things that I mean, unless you're dealing with like hydrogen tapes, you know, or um, uh, just different different types of engines, you know, and the planes. Yeah, I mean, when when you get to jet fuel, you know the the you know specific um, what do I want to say the specific energy capacity for that material is way higher than it is for any battery. And we're talking like tenfold. Uh, uh yeah, fold, at fold. least. So so uh, you know, there's no future then for. Uh, for an, all, an electric kind of society that's carbon neutral or carbon free, rather. No, 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 no. Uh, there, there, there is. I mean, you miss. Uh, what, what, what I'm, what I'm saying is that fly? the way, the way that um, uh, airliners are currently set up, the weights that they, you know, are supposed to be, uh, you know, quoted to carry, um, the design of the vehicle as well, it just doesn't lend itself to a direct replacement you'd have to design a a different aircraft you know in order for it to be workable so are we going to design this aircraft with i imagine on? so in the future yeah once once batteries get so light that it's just going to be like yeah of course i mean why wouldn't uh, we? when in the future i think but how how much do flying objects contribute to the total percentage of global warming today you think oh so just uh, a plane so what do you think? They're I talking? actually do not know. I would say probably like what five percent, ten percent. Guess it. Do you, here, let me. I have a pop quiz hot shot. I calculated do you know? this. I'm very proud. No, but I do know what is about ten percent. Actually, fifteen percent. Damn it. Okay, I'm, 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 I just messed up the quiz. Uh, <laughs> I told you the answer. What per, what percentage? Of the world CO2 is from people breathing alone, not cow farts, not uh, factories, not. I'm gonna guess ten or fifteen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fifteen percent, buddy. Okay. Fifteen percent. That's yeah. that's a, all the CO2 output in the whole world. Like yeah. Whole, and uh, you know, you talk to people who. That's a very small amount. <laughs> say that that doesn't matter. All right, well, 15% of, like, billions of metric tons is, uh... Well, it's a very small a amount, isn't it? 15% of all CO2 in the world? What if you took away 15% of the CO2 in the atmosphere right now? Would we say CO2 crisis severely hope? Mm. It's a lot. I mean, no, what I'm saying is it's, it's a small amount in the aggregate, you know? Like, that's, that's not, uh... Yeah, compared to eighty five percent fifteen fifteen percent no one considers it contributor at all no one even no one even thinks that it's one percent like no one even thinks it's like matters people breathe it until we didn't think about it. we he living mammals of our size or any size but just walk around and make a lot of CO2. it's really okay. shocking yeah, we and, and we also we make uh, we also make CO2. air moisture. And stuff we are too. evolved what? CO two producing factories. That is our entire like meaning of existence. Okay. I'm just saying that you know we're sitting around worrying about you know uh bad. Huh. Um. Yeah. So well, I don't know the uh, the. You know, energy cost a lot of the times of, um, you know, I guess making these things does drive up that that CO2 waste and stuff. I mean, that's the majority of our, you know, waste comes from refining materials. Like if we're refining, you know, silver or gold or uh, copper, aluminum silicon you know we're, we're dumping tons of co2 into the atmosphere uh, very little of that is actually yeah, sequestered but, you know. or and that's that's a really inefficient process sequestering it 
You know, I mean, a lot of it should actually be directly turned, I think, directly turned into graphene or carbon nanotubes. You know, it could be. Oh my be. god. You think we need more nanoparticles in the air for us to. No, no, no. We need, we need more nanotubes and stuff like that. Long nanotube structures because this is where the future of concrete is going. You know, this is we going to. We do not to... need to be making more tiny particles. <laughs> there are plenty of tiny particles. So, speaking of tiny particles, uh, in order to actually use these, you need to put them in arrays, right? Like these knife tubes or anything else, and whether you make a battery from them or whatever. Uh, so you need to be able to manipulate um, you know, spaces at small scales. Yeah. So, and that's partly used uh, lith lithographic techniques, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you're familiar with lith lithography. You've performed sure. it, I guess. Do you teach it, or I guess you teach it even. And then you, and, and, well, let's uh, not give too much out. <laughs> um, so then you uh, you have a electrically unified vehement lithography. Can you tell us more uh -huh. about this EUV? Well, yeah, okay, so like, you know, EUV is essentially the the furthest that you can get into the UV without getting into x-ray. And the reason why you don't go into x-ray is because most of the materials absorb rather than reflect x-ray, and so it's really hard to make mirrors to try to direct this wavelength around or try to, you know, condense it or try to manipulate the beam width or anything like that and there were years and years and years that were sent spent on uh, uh, doing x-ray lithography by IBM actually the guy that uh, that started the project that spent what about eight years on it or so at the end of it um, got so depressed they ended up taking his own life which was very unfortunate um, but what cropped up in its place was UV, the extreme UV, which you can make by essentially ablating materials. So turning, uh, turning materials directly into a plasma state. And this is what they're doing with, uh, uh, tin. So if you just take tin nanoparticles and blast that with a bunch of xenon fluoride lasers, you get, uh, 13.5 nanometer wavelength. And that's what you Particles use. coming off. Do those come uh, 90 degrees from the lasers hitting them? Hitting the, the surface? How does that emit the off? The wavelength? The, 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 does the tin particles that emit off of the chunk of metal are hitting with lasers? Uh, the tin, the tin particles are, are shot into a shot chamber. Are they degrees? Like in every direction? Uh, they, they are blasted something? symmetrically by, by lasers. Oh, yeah. so they're, they're, are they almost coherent with the laser beams? Yeah, yeah. So you have equal forces, uh, and it's not uh, that's interesting pushing the particle onto either side. You do get some residue, you know, around the chamber and stuff that has to be cleaned quite a bit. But oh, um, yeah, yeah, I, I imagine it's uh, it's it's pretty unique. And the the thirteen point five nanometer wavelength, you can actually use mirrors to direct it. You only have about. I think a 60% efficiency or something though of reflection so you're still losing a lot through heat but you can use a silicon molybdenum um, essentially what's what's called a uh, a super um, uh, super stack well no it, it's essentially a uh, epitaxial layer that is alternating between very thin layers of silicon and molybdenum Epitaxial meaning they're one and then stacked on another that's different and then stacked on another that's different. Yeah, yeah, that they're well, essentially that they're lattice matched, uh, so you don't get a whole lot of strain generation. Uh, so this crystal. is like a solid state battery kind of. Yeah, uh, it's it's crystals. So if you if yeah. you have a crystal and you um, start to put stress onto it, you actually mm -hmm. change its uh, electronic states. And so how the electron, you know, transitions. Yeah. yeah. So that's something and that, and that's you don't just want. Like, it, it's just like people, you know, you deform a relationship too much by stressing one out or something. And then you also have overlap spins, electrons, of course, that are the same spin. So they're, you, can't, you know, interact in the same space. We've all been there. That's why opposites mm -hmm. attract. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like yeah, basic uh, 
Yeah, yeah. It's basic. It's basic. It's basic. Uh, what was? It? What is it? Hole. What is it? The hole. EM. Yeah. What? Electromagnetic. Hole and well. What is it? What did you call this? Uh, where you have these. Oh, with solar moving? cells and stuff. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like. Well, with any, I guess, any material, yeah. There's there's two types of carrier, quote yeah, unquote, there's carriers. Like a whole, a whole if you layer have a material that, that has more of a p-type dopant in it, which means that it has a alloy with another material that lacks an electron in its uh, outer valence band, then it's going to end up accepting electrons. So what happens is these sort of virtual particles, which we call them, are holes which are essentially absences of electrons. These, These move or? through this crystal. And this is what carries the current. And mm. then with n-type material, it has a surplus of electrons, and the electrons mm -hmm. are what moves through the material. Uh, are those like metals? or? Um, they're, they're alloys, and they're huh. semiconductors. Now, um, if, the you, if you material. dope them up to a certain level, then they'd be t they actually do become metallic. So. What's, your, what's your favorite... Uh, P-type material, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I would say gallium nitride. <laughs> yeah, gallium. I, don't know. Yeah. I would guess gadolinium. I don't even know if it's real anymore. <laughs> gallium. Okay. I mean gallium. <laughs> <Gallinium. Yeah. laughs> oh, gallium. Gallium. So, uh... You ever see what happens you know, when you put gallium on aluminum? Uh, what happens? The aluminum just becomes get... like brittle. You can just you can just snap. Actually, on a lot of different metals, if you like throw gallium onto stuff, it just becomes super brittle. Hey, I'm so glad you got to work with that so much. I hope you uh, we breathed it in. Oh no 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 no! This is all in the all in the vacuum chamber. No, okay, yeah yeah yeah. I would be careful with uh, anything that said any of them at the end. No, I mean I mean people people can handle gallium I mean it's not uh, necessarily toxic to the body um, but yeah if uh, you know different different metal organic states of it though so if you have like um, gallium um, or what would they call it uh, uh, trimethyl gallium I think it is TNG that stuff yeah that will kill you if you breathe in well, anything that says trimethyl X is probably not the best. Yeah, thing. yeah, most of that stuff's just nasty. Yeah, the methyl groups basically make can make things suddenly pass the blood-brain barrier, or yeah. suddenly fit into hemoglobin, or basically yeah. crash everything out of your system. I mean, that's the funny it, thing it too. Right? What a methyl group can do is like yeah. everything, like the um, the RF components in your phone are made from two incredibly toxic materials, you know? <laughs> but when they're combined together, they're completely stable. Yeah. yeah, that whole amalgam in the dentist fillings was always uh, yeah. freaky to think about. Anyway, yep. I still have a lot of those silver fillings. Yeah, yeah, silver, mer mercury were. silver. Yeah. Oh, I got them. I probably swallowed most of them by now. <laughs> I got a large percentage. Oh, yeah. boy. I hope that alloy survives the gastrointestinal tract, huh? Huh? Yeah, right. I mean, silver's an antibiotic, too. Oh, great, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of stuff has trouble surviving around me. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you uh, take colloidal zombies. silver for too long, you turn blue. If I do what? If you take colloidal silver oh, really? for too long, say you take it for like 20 years or something like that for some reason, if you take that for too long, it actually starts to absorb into your skin. And it will start interacting with the sun and creating silver sulfides, mm. and it will turn you blue. <laughs> oh, that's great, but you're, but it seems to be non toxic. Besides that, huh? No, yeah, yeah, it's non toxic, but yeah. <laughs> I know people would put a penny in the a sterile culture water. So whenever you want to, yes. um, you know, you have to keep water with uh, tissue that's growing because mm -hmm. it'll dry out. So you have basically effectively pans of water in the bottom um you keep to keep the moisture high uh but obviously you want to keep it sterile it was just some people would put pennies in there and guess what happens uh it rusts yeah and stains the pan all to hell oh yeah and we're just like oh uh, people stop leaving pennies in here <laughs> but the copper i guess is pretty effective um yeah antimicrobial as well oh yeah yeah for sure let's get going
Yeah, so, they used to actually line um, line boats. Yeah? Like that's why the bottoms of boats were red, because they would line it with a copper-based paint to keep the barnacles from growing on it, and degradation from yeah. different uh, stuff in the water. You can see like the male fish going home to the wife, the female fish, and she's like, "Your lips been red. What you been tucking on? You been sitting there in that barnacle bench? You went over there in that barnacle, have you?" Lip stuck um, I mean, maybe the that's maybe that's the way, nature's whatever. way of marking you as a uh, as a fun guy. Got copper lips. Copper lips. Copper Good old lips. copper Red lips. lips. Red they lips. used to call me in people. high school. That's <laughs> <laughs> because I had an obsession with eating like copper a... wire. I don't know why. <laughs> he tastes like a penny. Uh... Yeah. Actually, you know, pennies tasted pretty good back in the day. I don't know. I don't know about you, but. <laughs> I remember kind of like the taste. I don't, I don't think I've ever. Reminded me kind of like a raw potato. I think I actually like sucked on a penny, yeah, out. when I was really young. But uh, it's like yeah, a raw no. potato that was left out with a little bit of vinegar on it. I don't know. <laughs> ah. Well, you know, I certainly hope that one day we're not doomed because it sounds like unless you can solve the whole electric flying machine issue, we're gonna be just pumping out tons and tons of fumes into the air. Um, I know that you're not the biggest I'm fan stuck. of Nate what Lewis, but I like, of Caltech, I like his, um, you know, petroleum replacement, you know, liquid fuel strategy, if it was ever feasible. But, you know, still, if you could burn something and get water, let's say. Instead, yeah, that's a, that's a hydrogen fuel system. Well... Yeah, not hydrogen. He had, I thought he had, no, he had something else. I thought he had another fuel idea. What, the photosynthesis one? He wanted to, he wanted to do some kind of like, um... The photo, photosynthesis still relied yeah, photo, on, on, using on hydrogen. The sun, using the fun sun to make the fuel. Yeah, because he's forming, he's, he's making formic acid. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Well, I guess maybe it's more efficient than hexane. Ugh. Yeah, it's stupid. But still, he he. I don't know what he's going to do with formic acid. Like you're obviously going to get CO2 if you're. Gonna he burn uses that. he uses the formic acid to make hydrogen. To make hydrogen, so he wanted he's a, he want, he's promoting the hydrogen. Uh, yeah. The hydrogen economy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I didn't know that. And that's that's why everyone's like trying to get him to shut up. <laughs> well, it's be, well. What, so why is the hydrogen? Because nobody wants an explosive gas in their vehicle, which they the main don't. Thing? They gas don't. They don't understand that gas is explosive. I, I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's it's this whole culture of fear around hydrogen. Oh, so you actually would be a proponent for hydrogen? Yeah, I mean, you know, hydrogen. Hydrogen used to be very widely used for a bunch of different situations. Everyone just knew you couldn't mix it with oxygen. You know, so it's just like. By ensuring you know, the you use it for reducing atmospheres and stuff, for making metallurgy, you know, there's, there's, there's commonly used in a bunch of different environments. Now it's very well, seldom we'll used. Two great well, hopefully we get there somewhere, you know, there. Well, I thank you so much for being a normal contributor to the show. Uh, me as well, thank you, me. Uh, and we will uh, be back next time with another rendition of uh, people who, you know, were really happy with how things are going and, and, and had a life okay, and experience that, that comes out you should be part of.